Question for you. Yeah. You said come around tax season, something you could not have predicted. It's just something you needed to live through to understand we get this yeah. spike. Yeah. You're in business for how long at this point? I mean, we had launched, we had like the real launch was in like October, August, or no, September of 2013. And so the spike comes in February. Of so 14? Like, of 14. So this is like five. So you months. had a lot going on in a very short period of time. Yeah. Yeah. It took off. Like, people wanted it. People I'm wanted thinking it. we're talking over the course of a few years building this thing up. It took off immediately. Within one year of, within one year of launching, like that September, Probably the September of the following year, we were doing $700,000 a month. Excuse me? Yeah. Within a month. A month. Yeah. A month. I want you, now you're a young (laughs) businessman now. You're obviously in your early 30s. Yeah. Talk to the audience. In my late 30s. You're in your late. Th- I no, you, I was, I'm an old head in Silicon Valley. Not back. today. Not today. Okay. Back then. Oh, oh back then. Okay. Back gotcha, then. Gotcha. Yeah, You're yeah, in your yeah, early yeah. 30s. Yeah. Your business is booming. Yeah. Talk to me. Forget me. Talk to the audience mm. about some pitfalls, about things, some growing pains that you guys went through because it's one thing to struggle with your business. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But it's a whole other thing when your business is moving faster than you and yeah. now you have to chase it yeah. if you're going to keep this momentum and yeah. not let things fall through the crack, the, the cracks and people start to look at you, oh, that business is, don't mess with them. They don't have this stuff together. Yeah. But, so is, is there any advice or any growing pains that you went through, some lessons that you can tell our audience? Yeah, I mean, I think that, so without a doubt, right, like, when it starts coming at you that fast, um, the business scales faster than you as a person can scale. And so now you have to catch up to the business in maturity, in in information, um, and and you have to learn new skills because what got you to the fur to, to what got you to blast off is not necessarily what's going to get you to the moon. Correct. And so you start to see like once things start getting, once like the machine starts going, you start, you start feeling the car shake. You start feeling the rails start to like shake and there's all kind of shit that like can start to break. And so like, you got to hire up all these people, right? You got to get new office space that can fit everybody. Um, um, you know, you have to really learn finance as fast as possible. Otherwise, you're going to run out of money or you're going to fuck up the money. Um, a lot of things you have to learn comes from, uh, well, let's play this. So to, like, no person can really scale as fast as something can grow. What you have to learn how to do is manage other people and let manage a larger group of people who can scale with the organization. And so really then it comes, to, it comes down to you learning how to manage teams and manage a team. And you have to put trust in a lot of people when you maybe are not used to putting trust in a lot of people because you've just been doing it yourself all these years. Um, and you know in those times like when you're trying to keep up with the business it takes a tremendous amount of focus there's a lot of temptation to get unfocused and go and do all the you know the fuckery on the side and and uh prematurely celebrate right uh which is one thing like I always try not to do is like, 
it, there's a balance between like celebration uh, of your wins, but you have to do that in a very focused, tight time frame. You win, quick celebration. Now you back to back to the business. There's a whole nother level. You didn't win the whole game. You won one one hand. You didn't win the whole game yet. So I think you have to keep that type of mentality and like stay, stu- stay super focused and you have to work on how you manage other people when things start growing, growing that fast. Otherwise, it will get out of control. And a lot of times it got out of control. And, you know, like I, I had employees end up stealing at one point. I had employees fighting with each other at one point. Like we had the office – we, we ended up having, but like we grew so fast. I got all these sales reps who were just calling all the stylists from all these inbound leads. And I had, I had like 50 people and we had to get this office super fast. So we ended up getting an office in Richmond, which, you know, it's like, you know, super urban area in, 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 uh, in the Bay area. Um, it's hood. And, but I got it for like a dollar a square foot and I could go, I could adjust and it was monthly. So I wasn't locked in Mm -hmm. and shit. We had the office broke into like four times. Wow. You know, like I'm up in the middle of, we installing little cameras that go to our phones and I'm up in the middle of the night fucking looking at the, you know, looking at our shit in the middle of the night. And so um, it doesn't stop. Like the problems just, they just do not stop. It just keeps coming. But, uh, but if you just stay focused and stay on it, yeah, you can do it. Now, I think it's an incredible story you're telling right here. How many employees do you guys have now? Uh, 65. Yeah, 65. So, so you're yeah. still relatively a small operation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I, 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 I want to keep it that way. From a people perspective, you know, a lot of times people, people ask you, like one of the first things people ask you when you run a company is like, how many employees do you have? Mm -hmm. Because that has become sort of an indicator of the size or success of a business. Um, In reality, like what you should be driving for is the highest amount of revenue for the lowest number of employees yeah but i'm glad you're touching and that's what's efficient now. right i'm so happy you're touching on this right now because yeah. that and, and that's part of the reason i asked you and i'm happy that um you know your your employees are as low as they are people people do things for perception yeah. people do things that they think that they should be doing for any entrepreneurs who are watching this yeah you're looking at a man who has grown a massive business yeah but it's not about how many employees you have yes you hire as needed yeah it's just that you want to keep your employees low your revenues high yeah so just hire the people that need to be in the building because while you are grandstanding and you're hiring people for the sake of hiring people that is just money going out the door yeah so important and I'm, and I'm glad you brought that up yeah no it's about the return on each employee like you should be looking at every hire like if i hire this person for a hundred thousand dollars i should be making three or four hundred thousand dollars from having this person this person should produce x amount of dollars for us or x amount of value for us um and you want that number to be as high as possible Right, like I think Google is like a company like where they, it's like per employee, they make like a million dollars per employee or something like that, right? It's not, it, you don't want just hella people. You want hella money. There you go. <laughs>